And so, with all that background information said, the cricket is facing the same problem. And the fact that cricket also suffers this is just the fact of we're in a very difficult situation within the state of the world economy, within the state of world capitalism, where new sources of growth and profitability are decli decreasing, and so you have to find ways of maximizing profits where areas of new expansion are not there. And the obvious pressure is to cut costs where costs are too high, and to focus attention where your revenue gain will be at its highest. And so the, pres the pressure is therefore to move away from those forms of cricket that are not going to be as popular and interesting, that often are very slow and boring, and that requires a lot of concentration to understand, and a move towards the fast, the frills, the key, the, the raw emotional surge of seeing an event take place before your eyes. And so, over the past 30 or so years, these pressures have been building up and building up inside of world cricket, and it's clear that eventually something will have to snap. Right now, the snapping has not happened, and it's nowhere n it's not yet reached the high intensity pressure where the snap could be predicted to happen within 12 or 24 months. But the snap is on the cards. As these pressures build up inside of world cricket, more and more administrators, more and more advertisers, and more and more players will get the idea that the slower forms of cricket, which often, which always don't have the same high profitable feedback, and yet are very expensive to make, are just not worth it and they should be cut. While the form of cricket that is thrilling and exciting and fast and has a massive net return, should be doubled down and increased. But like I said before, there's a... there is a law that underlies this problem, which is the declining return, that as you more and more get used to an emotional experience, either through manipulating your own emotions or taking a drug or whatever, over time your experience will be decreased, which means you have to increase the dosage in order to relive that same experience. And so you have a choice. You either become addicted to this experience, in which case you just go deeper and deeper and deeper into this world until all you can think about is having this raw emotional experience all the time, in which case you've fallen into, you're, an addi you're an addict and your life has fallen apart. Or you try and get control of your life and realize that unless you portion out what you're doing, unless you try to find some sort of order, only then will you keep your life stable and sane. And so, and so anyone who is thinking that the solution to world cricket's problems is to just maximize the raw emotionality and the raw thrill
the thing is, they think that they're coming up with some sort of innovation because they notice something, but actually they're just moving towards the direction that the wind is pushing them. The facts are that through the contradictions in the system, there is an underlying pressure to do this, and so they are allowing themselves to be pushed in this direction, and then they're saying, they're telling everyone what they see on the horizon, and yet they think that they're great innovators or entrepreneurs for noticing this, it's actually quite arrogant and elitist of them to think like that. But anyway, that's a side note. The important thing is that the net return will decrease. So if you try to increase the emotional raw experience of cricket in the at the expense of the rational contemplation, eventually cricket will fall into an addiction and it will suffer. You could almost think about how the entire sport might completely collapse if this is allowed to happen.